Good afternoon, Trinity, and welcome to The Rock. I am your announcer, Sean Sullivan. On this episode of The Rock, we will look at three local organizations that demonstrate the true Christian compassion of bringing to life the message of Catholic social teaching. We learn more about an organization that works to provide safe drinking water for people in developing communities. We will take a closer look at an organization. And we find out more about a program that provides refugees with the training, skills, and knowledge needed to adapt to a new culture and society. All this and more on this episode of The Rock. Welcome to The Rock. The Rock is Trinity's television news magazine that features stories based on a theme that focuses on people, places, and events here at Trinity and in the Louisville community. Louisville is fortunate to have a number of nonprofit organizations that serve as models of Christian compassion through the assistance and services that they provide in those need not only in the Louisville area but people all around the world. In today's first story, Dallas Jenkins and Aaron Aben introduces us to Waterstep, a Louisville based nonprofit organization that uses the donations of gently used shoes to fund safe drinking water projects all around the world. Step is a nonprofit organization that is focused on bringing safe water to people who don't have it. Um, water is something that we take for granted. Here we just turn on the tap. Uh, that's not the case in other parts of the world. I felt like God was telling me I needed to do something else with my life, something a little deeper. Um, and then once I started getting involved in the work here, um, it became just a passion. And the more I saw the needs out there, the more I wanted to help. And then you're going to take your pump pliers and you're going to snug that up now. It's going to be very difficult for you to feel what's tight. Waterstep offers training at their local location for those who seek to serve. But Waterstep also offers virtual training. We teach people from other countries who can't come here to the U.S. to be trained. Uh, we teach them via Skype or through some kind of video conferencing software. Um, and they open up their equipment right in front of us and we're opening it up on our end, they're opening it up on the, their end, and we're saying attach this hose here. And so we do this, this training, this virtual training with them. Um, and then I usually follow their progress for about a year. In addition, Waterstep takes volunteers on mission trips to assist people in developing countries. We take teams, whether it's you know high school groups, church groups, or just individuals that want to go out into the world. We take them, we, put, we install what we call mini water treatment plants. We teach health and hygiene to the communities. Um, so they're usually seven to ten days long, depending on where you're going. And um, we, we work within the schools or in slums, a variety of different places. And I think my fondest memory of, on any of these trips is always that moment when people are drinking clean water for the first time. You kind of see this light bulb go on and they realize their life could be changed from this moment on. It always, always makes me cry. I think it's also uh, motivating for me to, to, when I've traveled overseas, uh, to do installations, uh, to see what a difference firsthand it makes. I can read the reports that come in or the feedback, but seeing it firsthand is make a, makes a huge difference for me. For a number of years, Waterstep has been collecting shoes in order to fund their projects. Um, we have two types of shoe programs. We have our athletic shoe program and then just our regular mixed shoes. But both of them, we collect them. There's over 200 drop-off locations here in Louisville. We collect the shoes. We store them here until we have a tractor trailer load full. Once the, we get a truckload of shoes, then we call our exporter. He comes and picks them all up. He sells them to the very developing countries that we're working in. Um, and then the money we receive from that, we put towards our water projects. The shoes that Trinity and other schools or churches are doing, um, is a large portion of our budget. Trinity supports Waterstep's effort by holding a school-wide shoe drive through its house system. Senior Cameron Elder is one of the student leaders. Well, I'm the house service captain for Tucson. 
and Tucson's been partnered with Waterstep for a while now, longer than I've been at Trinity. And I've been able to connect with all the Tucson advisings and the house reps from each grade level, and they've helped me out with organizing the whole project. Any service, it just makes you feel good. You get to give back to to give back to the community, especially taking a leadership position like the service captain is a great way uh, for me to give back. Well, what we're doing at Trinity is just a collection and we're trying to get as many shoes as possible. There's no set goal. And our thinking was that making it a house competition, which is something we haven't done before, uh, will get a lot more people to bring shoes in to try to get points for their house. The school's community participation has helped make this drive a success. Uh, it's been great. Um, we've had advising groups from Tucson help make posters and all the teachers have been uh, really great with telling all their students to bring in shoes and um, a lot of teachers have talked to me about how like, great it is that it's competition and it's really helping motivate students. Through their compassion and service to others, Waterstep and their volunteers are able to help provide clean drinking water to those in need throughout the world. I'm Dallas Shinkins, along with Aaron Aben, reporting for TTV News. Thanks, guys. In today's second story, we learn more about Crossroads Ministries. Crossroads Ministry provided members of junior class retreat experiences which invites them to build relationships with members of the community who live on the margins of society and it engages them in prayer and the gospel vision of peace and justice. Brendan Gent and Noah Miller have the story. Crossroads Ministry has been helping Trinity build men of faith and compassion through Junior Retreat Day. Crossroads believes in teaching through experience and action, as Alex Flood, trainee grad and director at Crossroads, explains. Well, hopefully it offers first-hand experience, which I believe is the best experience. I think that you can study things like poverty or homelessness, but until you get down into the nitty-gritty and shake hands and share a meal with somebody, um, it can be kind of abstract. Students first got a chance to walk around an impoverished Louisville West Side neighborhood and then reflected on what they saw and experienced. After reflecting on their neighborhood walk, juniors then had the chance to go to two organizations, either Active Day or the Clink Center. The Clink Center has been a safe community center for senior citizens in West Louisville since 1978. While at the Clink Center, students have a chance to play pool, ping pong, and talk with seniors. Students then had a chance to come to St. Vincent de Paul, where they ate with patrons at the Open Hand Kitchen. Yeah, me and my friend Aaron, we uh, sat with somebody at a lunch table. Uh, we had some conversation about UK basketball and figured out how, uh, how much he loved his daughter and how much uh, he's working hard to get her in school and keep her in school. So it was a really heartfelt conversation that we had. After lunch, students head back to Crossroads, where they reflect on sameness and compassion, which is an innate part of a crossroads retreat. Um, essentially what we're doing for is looking for sameness, looking for friendship rather than practicing um, traditional service. Um, but I believe that any relationship, I believe that um, all things Christian, all things even from any religious uh, background are, are rooted in compassion and a care uh, for anyone no matter where uh, they come from. On junior retreat, juniors had a chance to learn a lot about how we treat others and how we should look at the less fortunate. Probably, I think one of our main hopes, probably the main hope is just that people realize how similar we all are, especially in today's age. Whenever I see a homeless person, I'm definitely gonna give them as much as I can just to try to get them through the day because I've seen firsthand on what they're experiencing. So I'll just try to help out my neighbor. Thanks, Brandon and Noah. All right, in our final story today, We'll take a closer look at Catholic Charities of Louisville and its English as a second language program. Catholic Charities of Louisville is the largest private human, re human services agency operated by the Archdiocese of Louisville, serving people of all religious, ethnic, and social and economic backgrounds. Catholic Charities offers many different programs to assist members of the Louisville community. One such program, the Migration and Refugee Services, which assists resettling refugees by helping them work towards self-sufficiency. Each year, around 600 refugee adults 
and their children benefit from the Migration and Refugee Services English as a second language program. Learning English as well as receiving training in the new skills and knowledge they will, they will need to adapt to a new culture and society is vital for refugees. Mark Hughes has the story. The Catholic Charities of Louisville's Migration and Refugee Service Department has been resettling refugees in the Louisville metro area since 1975. In addition to providing housing, health care, and clothing, refugees take English as a second language classes where they are able to learn and practice English with certified teachers. I came as a refugee from Bosnia with my family through Catholic Charities Migration and Refugee Services. I was a student in this school and I also learned English in ESL class for a while and then I became a part-time employee in school as a child care worker. There, was a, uh, there were times when I did not have any children in the class, so I observed and assisted uh, an ESL teacher in the beginner um, ESL level class. Um, when teaching position became available, I applied and become an, ed an adult ESL teacher. Um, after six years of working uh, for Catholic Charities ESL program, I was promoted to uh, ESL manager. When refugees arrive in the United States, they receive services and support from one of um, voluntary agencies that have a cooperative agreement with the United States government to resettle refugees who have been legally admitted to the United States. Our agency finds a place for the families when they arrive to Louisville and assists them with initial integration into the new community and culture. Children enroll in a JCPS ESL program and adults are required to attend ESL classes to learn English. Without English proficiency, our clients uh, will have limited opportunities for better jobs and future education. All of the refugees placed into the Catholic Charities of Louisville's Migration and Refugee Service Program are legally admitted to the United States. As victims of persecution because of their religious or political beliefs, refugees interviewed for this story preferred to not appear on camera for their safety and well-being of themselves and their families. Participants are thankful for the services that the ESL program provides. Uh, it's wonderful, so nice. I like it so much. It's very helpful. It's extremely helpful. We have too much uh, classes. They teach us how to do with taxes, with things we don't know about at all. So it's very important. Teacher Patrick McBride feels that the training and the practical skills and knowledge that the refugees will need to adapt to their new culture and society are the most important aspects of his job. You know, the, th the thing that I like teaching the most is stuff that's practical, that I know that they can use in their jobs. So, for example, filling out a job application, explaining payroll deductions, how to do interviews, uh, putting a resume together. So, I like doing the stuff that's going to pay off for them. I love my job very much. Um, our school is not only about learning English, uh, it's also a refugees first contact with a new culture. So all of us, um, ESL teachers and other staff members make sure that their experience is very positive and memorable one. Uh, we understand many challenges the students are going through, especially in their first few months of the resettlement so we make sure they feel welcomed. Community support is essential for our client's success. Volunteers and mentors can do so much to help our students. Many of our clients were doctors, engineers, painters, tailors, whose skills can contribute so much to our economy if given a chance. Thanks to the compassion and generosity of the Catholic Charities of Louisville's ESL program, these refugees will no doubt make a smooth transition into their new culture and enrich the Louisville community. Thanks, Mark. Well, that's it for this episode of The Rock. We hope you enjoyed today's show. If you would like to learn more about the organizations featured in the program, check out TTV's YouTube page for links to the stories and the organizations. Have a good afternoon, Trinity.